Hello and welcome to uh, this episode of Digital Tanker Workshop. Uh, my name is Ben Christian. Uh, in Tibetan, my name is Jampe Dorje. Uh, I'm an artist who uh, creates tankers using uh, Photoshop uh, and Artrage. And uh, hopefully, this uh, series of tutorials, which I've been uh, providing on YouTube, is uh, helping some people to. Um, develop their own techniques and create their own uh, beautiful uh, Buddhist art in the Tibetan tradition. Okay, so this is um, the Lake Bourne Vajra image. <coughs> and um, the bit we're looking at now is the, the upper section of the Tanka. It's a symmetrical section which uh, has Buddha Samantabhadra um, and according to the sadhana which I'm using uh, to create this image which describes this scene uh, the sky is filled with uh, a rainbow lattice uh, and it's describing a particular meditator's vision uh, after achieving uh, Rigpa so here's my attempt at creating this uh, rainbow like lattice or structure we have um, a basic sketch that I created, which is really just a sort of a tonal thing. Uh, and so now it's cre about creating these ribbons of light which follow that, uh, that sort of tonal uh, lyrical structure that I've created, it, which you can see in the background there. It's really just describing some shapes. Uh, so now we have to turn that into some color. So in order to create the lines, rather than drawing the lines, because uh, a long line is difficult to draw and long lines parallel to each other are even more difficult to draw uh, i've chosen to uh, draw these lines using the the pen tool and so the pen tool is a vector drawing uh, mechanism which creates a line uh, mathematically rather than through pixels and it's very easy to create uh, exactly the line you want using the pen tool once you get used to it it's a little bit hard to to work out where to put the points at, uh, initially but once you get that um, uh, sorted then uh, it becomes quite intuitive and easy to work with here you can see me just uh, duplicating sections so that i'm not doing a lot of drawing that i don't have to do uh, so mirroring those two parts and uh, creating a slight uh, difference between the two sides of the image using the warp transform tool uh, which pr uh, prevents that uh, any mirroring of the image from being perfect it needs to in my uh, in the way I work I like to have the 80 or 90 percent rule where it needs to ref be 80 or 90 percent perfect and that will um, prevent the the viewer from uh, perceiving the image is overly perfect or cold <coughs> so we've created all our line work there we've got it uh, in accordance with our sketch we've got five bands of color and now we're just uh, creating masks which identify those individual bands of color so if i want to work on blue i can just click one of those channels and it will select all the the blue bands of color at the bottom of the picture there you can see I've created a little bit of a palette of colors there they're based on the image that I've created so far so uh, a good place to start if you're not really sure about what colors to use is just to use uh, your existing colors in the picture and uh, and that's the, my starting point here uh, the image is actually completed now and so what I can tell you is I didn't end up using any of those colors so like I said it was just for me it was a starting point uh, and uh, using some refinement over a couple of days I finally got it to the the colors that I wanted it's very easy to um, you know if you're drawing a rainbow to say oh the rainbow is rainbow colored but if you look at um, some tankers uh, and you get some reference images then you'll notice that there's no real uh, th that I could find anyway there's no real uh, st 
structure for the colors of a rainbow. It's not um, something that's defined uh, in the way that we define a rainbow. A rainbow is, is, is very defined because it's a, a, a phenomenon that occurs through uh, the physical properties of light or the non-physical properties of light maybe even but um, in terms of the um, in the tradition of painting rainbows within tankas I could find no evidence to suggest that there's any particular order of colors uh, or colors to be used it, it's largely at the discretion um, of the artist if you look at ten uh, rainbows depicted in ten different tankas then you'll see the, the order of the colors and the colors themselves um, vary between those ten tankas so here I'm just refining my masks using the quick mask, quick mask method sorry uh, just using the eraser there to refine the selection uh, using pixels uh, by painting with pixels and the quick mask mode or method is um, used to be used a lot in Photoshop back in the old days uh, I've been using Photoshop since version 4 <coughs> and uh, at some point quick mask mode became available and uh, back in the old days it was really the only way you had of creating a um, very refined selection like if you had to select hair ex for example which was always the hardest if you took a photograph of someone who had uh, hair blowing in the wind and you wanted to separate the, the, the uh, background from the foreground uh, using a selection then a quick mask mode was the way to do it in the old days uh, since then lots of uh, selection techniques have come about which are more automated and so people perhaps don't use quick mask mode as much uh, but in, in painting tankas it's absolutely essential so I guess what I'm saying is if, if you're not uh, familiar with it or you're not using it take a look at it because uh, it will speed your workflow dramatically so the reason I'm uh, using I'm just having to refine these selections with the eraser tool is uh, simply because when you select a large uh, area using the magic wand it, it can't select accurately down into those very um, pointy areas where you start getting uh, intermediate pixels so you just have to take care of that uh, manually and there's no, no real way around that I always uh, emphasize and I'll emphasize again how important it is to get your channels accurate um, it leaves you with uh, so many more options um, when it comes to finishing the tanka and it saves you a lot of uh, work in the end patching little things up so if you get them right the, the first time uh, it's laborious and it's uh, boring, it's no fun, uh, there's no creativity to it, uh, but it, it really is essential. So, yeah, please uh, take the time to get your, your channels accurate and it'll save you time and frustration in the end. Okay, so I think that's all of my uh, channels. As it turned out, the rainbow uh, was much more simple than I originally intended, so uh, many of these channels that I've just created I didn't end up using anyway. 
Uh, here you can see uh, my background image with those sort of dark misty mountains below. And here I'm just going to start laying in some colour. So at this point there's no expectation that the colours that are being uh, put into the tanker, into the rainbow, will be the ones that will be used in the end. Uh, it's really just a matter of getting down pixels, getting something there that you can look at, and then refining from that point. So this is a very, very gross uh, stage of, um, of the process, and then it's just refined after that. If you were painting uh, with paint and traditional media, then this stage you would have to get right from the beginning uh, because you don't really have an option to, to make multiple goes at changing colours and colour structures. And so the beautiful uh, thing about the digital workflow is that the colours that you choose <coughs> are really uh, uh, arbitrary and it's, it's up it's available at any time to change the colours. Uh, generally it will be non-destructive, sometimes it, it, it will be destructive editing. Uh, but generally you can change the colours uh, as much as you like without too much problem. Where you'll find problems, if you uh, lay, lay down a heap of colours and you want to change them maybe 20 times and finally arrive at the correct uh, uh, colour that you, you like, every time you've changed those colours uh, the intermediate pixels or the fringing pixels become corrupted and they're the pixels that lie directly below your line. So <coughs> if you have your line, what you'll find is if you, if you remove the line work which sits on top in the layer stack, uh, there's a thin band of very corrupt pixels underneath. Okay, so here we are. We're um just continuing on our rainbow for the background. Um, I've done a bit of work off camera and I've come up with something which uh, I think is going to work for this image. And I'll just show you how I arrived at that. So um, the last little clip I shot, we were um, making selections and uh, working out some colors and some structures for the rainbow. And um, what I've done is I've just refined all of that to, to get it to a point uh, that I'm happy with. So I'll just go through with you what I've done. So here in the upper section of the, the painting we have a, a number of layers. So if I turn on and off a few things here, let's turn that layer off. Okay, so here's our central central layer. I'll turn up the opacity on that so you can see it a bit more. Um, okay, so I introduced that and it's a little bit too busy for what um, what I want. There's a little bit too much uh, repetition. It's a bit too, um, I don't know what to say, it's a little bit too uh, stripey for want of a better word. So what I did is I duplicated that layer and then I added on top this next layer and I changed the variation in color I colorized that layer so that it's simply pink and that added a layer of depth to it but it also um, reduced that uh, very stripy quality which was a little bit too dominant for that uh, central top part of the image it was making the the whole image too top heavy and then all I did is um, I, I colorized the layer as I said and then I transformed it so it wasn't sitting directly on top of the other layer just so it has a little bit more uh, um, it's a little bit more lyrical and um, it fits in a little bit uh, better in terms of the, the flow of the composition I experimented with uh, for example uh, creating a bit of a a bit of a lattice So 
So, for example, that's quite common in, uh, and in fact, the sadhana that I'm, I'm working from that's describing this image describes the, the rainbow pattern as lattice-like. So that's just a matter of, uh, alter, you know, alternating the pattern a little bit so that uh, so that some parts are over the top and some parts are under. So you can create a little bit of a lattice like that. Uh, I experimented with that and I didn't like it. It was still too busy. The cent there's, a, there's a central figure of Samatha Bhadra that fits here within the, the halo section and um, it detracted from, from that. I wanted that to be um, uh, really central in terms of where the eye rests on the image. If you have a lot of uh, contrasting elements surrounding, then the eye doesn't rest on the, the deity that's, that's sitting there. So I decided not to do that. So what I did is, is just had that simple pattern and then I just uh, played with the opacity of those layers make the back one quite subtle and then the one that's resting above that uh, a little bit transparent just so we can see the underlying layer coming through a little bit and that's how I arrived at that uh, top central section. Now this surrounding um, looping section of rainbow um, the colors I chose um, I did a little bit of research and there doesn't seem to be any um, set order uh, of colors. Um, you can do it chrom chromatically as a rainbow would appear, um, but that doesn't look very good. And uh, so when that didn't look good, I, I looked for some, uh, some reference images and they're really in the research I did, which was to look at maybe 10, 20 tuggers, there didn't seem to be any um, uh, set order of colour. It's really just a matter of getting um, the colour that, that suits your image. And so that's really how I arrived at uh, these colours. One of the other things I wanted was this uh, light blue ribbon. I wanted that to be on the underside because where it creates a nice contrast just in this upper section of the tanka. Uh, and I'll play with the opacity just so that it, it highlights that a little bit. It just adds a nice little leading line there. Uh, when you're doing your image, uh, the eye will always naturally fall on uh, two things. One will be the, the area of greatest contrast, and the second will be um, generally a face. If there's a face, it'll go to that uh, because we seek out, the, the hum human beings seek out the eyes within a uh, within an image and it also rests on uh, areas of greatest contrast so the uh, if you want to create an area of attention in your tanka you just simply make it um, more contrasty than the rest you can also add saturation to that area will we'll do have a similar effect so if we look at this uh, this top ribbony section I'll just decrease the mask that I've applied so you can see the bits that I've uh, decided I didn't like. So I had this incredibly complex uh, system of rainbow, as you can see, and it was just way too much. Uh, the the tanka that uh, sorry the the sadhana that's describing this image uh, describes the sky as being latticed with rainbow, and so I wanted to try and achieve that, but it really detracted from the central figure and from the image in general. So. I, I just dialed that down as much as I could so that it still reflects that description but um, it has it also serves the purpose of uh, the image as well so that's what I came up with there so just a, a hint of rainbow in this section and then the rest going to uh, to complete transparency and then uh, also some some subtle areas of transparency just to make some places stand out more than others which gives the appearance that the rainbow is more three-dimensional three so that this area is coming forward and this area is receding here uh, it's just simply because this area is a little bit uh, lighter a little bit more opaque than this than this area here which is darker uh, what else have I done 
Uh, down the bottom, I also had a similar idea at the bottom to have this very complex uh, structure of rainbows. And that was primarily to balance the image, but um, it didn't work. The, the bottom uh, became too heavy and uh, way too much detail in the bottom. So what I opted for is just this uh, quite a simple, very subtle area of rainbow down the bottom here. And this rainbow actually uh, frames this central element of, of offerings. So if we look at that, um, that bottom section, if I find the layer that it's associated with, yeah, you can just see there. So what I've done is I've got it at 33%. Uh, if I have it at, at full opacity, it's way too much for this image. So uh, I arrived at about a 33% opacity. When I print the image, I'll fine tune that because generally what you'll find is um, when we print this, this is all very, uh, very subtle graduations in terms of uh, color and tone. And it may not actually uh, print the way it's appearing on the screen. So when I get to doing a, a, a hard proof, then I'll, I'll, I'll fine tune this um, as best I can to get that, uh, that level that I'm after. The only other thing I've done is I've uh, gone into the advanced blending uh, section here and I've just knocked out the opacity of that layer so that it's not, uh, the rainbow isn't uh, coming into these dark sections. I want it to be completely transparent where the dark sections are. So if I'm, I muck around with this you can see that effect there. So it didn't didn't look right. It needs to be coming from uh, a point with behind those that first little set of ridges, and that's uh, kind of what I came up with there. So they're my rainbow effects. Uh, the bottom very subtle. Uh, the top is much more more lyrical and uh, uh, pronounced. Uh, other things I've done here is I've just created a little bit of uh, intertwining. Uh, often you see the lattices, um, there'll be a complete lattice work here so that everything sort of, uh, you know, like a basket weave for example, everything um, weaves in and out of the other. I experimented with that and it didn't work, it was too complex and again it created an area of interest uh, that was outside of the central figure. So I chose just to have a simple intertwining where it just dives behind this uh, light ribbon, comes out and then uh, in front of this main rainbow and that just again gives more depth to it so that there's a, a spatial element, a three-dimensional element. Okay so we're all, I'm actually almost at the end of the tanker, I've done all the other work um, but the last thing I want to do in this top area, generally you'll see um, I create another layer there. Uh, generally you'll see in the rainbows there'll be some some shading so there'll be a darker or lighter area so it won't just be a like a band of color like that there'll be some subtlety to the the uh, tonality of, of each of these bands so I need to work on that and you'll also see uh, a system of um, rays that run down the, the band like that. So I'm feeling like the, uh, the image needs a little bit of just some kind of subtle detail in this uh, rainbow area so it's just not flat. And I'm going to do that by creating these rays that run down the uh, sorry, these uh, radiant lines that run down the, each ribbon of light and also by shading each of the, the ribbons themselves. The shading of the ribbon I can do in Photoshop. This ray I'm going to do in um, Art Rage and I'll make use of the smoothing function of the pen tool or the ink pen tool uh, just to make it a little bit easier for myself. Uh, as you can see, I'm not the best 
yeah I'm not so good at doing uh, I don't have a very accurate hand so I'm going to need the, the smoothing function to get that to look uh, so it doesn't look like a, a three-year-old child's done it so um, so what we'll do now is we'll flip over to Artrage we'll create some layers there and we'll create um, a separate layer that we can bring back into Photoshop that's going to have these uh, ray-like elements in there so the easiest way to uh, in this instance to get our image into Artrage is uh, to use an, a new function which has been in Photoshop uh, fairly recently but uh, uh, I only saw it appear I think in the last couple of years but I'm not exactly sure how long it's been here for but it's very very handy um, by selecting the entire canvas so command A for con or control all I mean select all then we can go so without having to flatten anything without having to do anything we can just do uh, edit and here copy merged what that does is copies um, everything as though it's flattened. So there we go, copy merged. Then we can go uh, file. So it's on the clipboard, right? So file new. Often, um, if you some, sometimes this is a bit of a hidden function, but when you've got something copied to the clipboard and you create a new document, it creates the document at the exact size of what you copied onto the clipboard. So it's a very easy way of creating a new document. Uh, you just need to have document type set to clipboard as opposed to all these different things. Uh, so we we'll go open and then that's exactly the same size as what's on our clipboard. Then command V for paste and there's our uh, flattened image. Then we just need to save that as a JPEG so we'll go save as. Uh, I've already done that so all it's a matter of doing is making sure you've got uh, JPEG selected here and there. Select the compression, doesn't really matter, just needs to be fairly high. And then we can close that, we don't need it. And then we'll just pop across to Artrage. Okay, so here we are in Artrage. Uh, we'll go File. Uh, where are we? Sorry, that's Photoshop. Artrage File. Import Image File. Then uh, get to our directory. And what we look for here is the JPEG. If you don't save as a JPEG, um, Artrage will open Photoshop documents. But a document of this size, which is uh, essentially 6,000 by almost 9,000 pixels, Artrage is really going to struggle with that. And it seems to handle JPEGs um, with more efficiency than, um, than Photoshop. So I always uh, work with a JPEG image coming into Artrage. It just seems to, to work better. And I'm sure as, uh, you know, as time goes on, Artrage will become more proficient at working with these very large images. So here we go, open, and we'll see if it works. Typically this will take a long time to save. And things will just be slow with an image this size. You could always, uh, and probably perhaps what I should have done is you can always, since we're only working in this top part, I could have cropped the image to here. But let's see how we go. So we'll add a new layer. At this point we'll save it. And we'll call that radiant slime. So here you go, save it. It'll take a little while. Um, now here in Outrage, we're not interested in color or anything like that. All we're interested in is recording some pixels. So we're just going to select um, an ink color, which is uh, easy to see. Then we just need to get our brush the right size. Now if this was an outline, 
um, we'd be doing it at around uh, 4%. So let's try that and see uh, how that scale looks. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, now we'll just do some experiments to get our smoothing right, so that's way too much smoothing. That's probably about right. Maybe a bit less. So with the smoothing function, it's quite hard to get your lines to um, match up where they begin and end. I never worry about that. You can always correct that later in Photoshop. Now, to save myself some work, a lot of these I'll duplicate. And I'll copy and transform them. But I want to have at least, I think, three. To choose from and to alternate with because what will happen if I don't do that is you'll just put them next to each other and they'll, a pattern will appear which will be really evident when you look at the tanka from a distance say there'll be uh, a patterns flowing across like for example where where these aren't quite correct that'll be next to it and that'll be next to it and there and there'll be a, a distinct line going across there of that pattern Okay, so we're just now speeding up this little section. Um, as it turns out, in the end, these little uh, rays of light that I'm drawing in here became something quite subtle, and you almost don't see them. I think they ended up as a little layer at about uh, 4% or something like that. Um, the reason I chose to do that is because um, they were too dominant in the image uh, as, I, as I've said a number of times I think already that the um, the, the figure of Samantha Badra that sits inside this rainbow um, lattice work needs to remain the dominant element and um, by having too much high contrasting detail uh, it, it took the eye away from that um, so, but what it did do is at that very subtle level, um, it became something which added some detail and took away from the flatness of those bands of color. Because I didn't actually do any rendering on that color. Um, it, though, there was no shading or uh, very little um, additional work than what you see here on the screen. So just those little um, filigrees of light uh, made all the difference. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, there will be one more in this series uh, with the Lake Bourne Vajra. And I think in that, uh, in that last tutorial, I'm just going to show some painting of the central figure. Uh, it's a secret tanker, so I can't show the whole image, but there's just some areas. I did some work on the jewellery and on the lotus, and um, I can put those into a little tutorial for you. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, happy meditating.